surprise. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm back. Uh, I'm reviving this YouTube channel. Um, how, how are you, by the way? How have you been? So yeah, a lot of stuff has happened. Uh, what has happened? Well, I I'm in a new space. This is my new atelier. Uh, since my last couple of videos, uh, when I first started doing amber types, uh, I've kind of made some progress shooting amber types of my own. So, you know, doing wet plates and working a little bit on the process because it's still a little bit, a little bit tricky, and I haven't had too much time uh, to to get into it. But that's kind of what I want this channel to be about because I've been still working a lot. Uh, I did my master's degree um, shooting for a lot of commercial clients and working with a lot of people and you know that it, it takes time away from kind of my own work or my own experimentation stuff like web plates, box cameras, darkroom stuff. Um, there's a bit less time for it in my life now so I'm bringing back the channel. We are going to use this channel as a kind of way for me to experiment and to do stuff that's fun. Analog film stuff, right? Because photography gets very serious and it gets very intense when you're doing it commercially and I want to bring the fun back into photography a little bit, at least for me, because that's something that's been lacking. So today's activity is going to be sorting out the backlog of film that I currently have so that going forward, everything's fresh, right? We don't need to be bogged down with worrying about what we've shot before. So today we're going to be developing my backlog, archiving everything, and then I'm going to see if maybe I can't find one or two keepers. I can't remember a lot of when I shot this film, so it'll be really nice to see it again. And maybe we'll make a print, you know, because I think that's what I want most of these videos to kind of be about. It's we'll head out, we'll shoot something interesting, come back, make a print, and so that it's kind of this little journey, uh, full analog process, you know, we go out, we shoot, come back, develop, produce a print, you know. Photographs are about prints, I need to get back into my darkroom printing, so that's what this will be about. Cool. So being in Malaysia, its ambient temperature is obviously warmer than 20 degrees. Uh, we have air conditioning in here, but it's still not enough to kind of make room temperature an okay temperature for developing. So what I do, because uh, Ilfosol is a one-shot developer, so it's got to be mixed fresh every time. Uh, like you saw before, the fix and stop are reusable and they're in the fridge. So that means I have to mix my chemicals up to temperature every time I want to do it. So the way I do that in a tropical kind of environment is that I have one tub of cold water that's from the fridge and then one that's just uh, room temperature tap water. So what I do is I basically I'll measure out my developer concentrate and then we're just going to add cold water, hot water, cold water, hot water until we kind of reach 20 degrees at the same time that we reach our total volume which is going to be 500 milliliters in the case of this tank. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. Just add a little bit of cold water and read our thermometer. So I'm going to go to like 250 which is halfway and see where we're at. So this is showing me 11 degrees. I'm going to add some room temperature water to 400. So now that's 18 degrees, which is okay. We're kind of within that range. Uh, black and white developing, you know, plus minus two degrees off of 20 degrees. Uh, generally, you'll be fine. So, but we're going to try and hit that 20. A little bit of cold, a little bit of hot. Great. So we're at 20 degrees. Come, come and see, I'll show you. So we can see 20 degrees, easy. I see a lot of people still use mercury thermometers 
which is cool and all, but I don't know, man. Digital thermometer. We shooting analog film doesn't mean our tools have to be analog, right? This is way more uh, accurate. Uh, and it's cheap, right? It's just the kitchen thermometer. You stick it in the in the chicken. Get a digital thermometer. So much easier. Okay, so film is in the dryer. I've got a couple more rolls to do. So I'm gonna reset, do all of these together. And then, yeah, I will skip this part. You don't have to see the developing over and over again. It's, it's, it's okay. Next time I see you, we'll be ready to do some prints. Welcome back. Uh, it's only been a little while for you, but it's been a few days for me because after our developing session, I went out to get some dinner. It started to rain and it hasn't stopped raining for a few days. And I'm in a building with a, with a tin roof and that's not too good for the, um, for the audio. So I took a few days off, but we're back. I've got my negatives all in their sleeves and I've had a look through them and it's been really fun to see what has been on those rolls this whole time because there was stuff from earlier this year when my friend, good buddy of mine got engaged, uh, my cousin's wedding which was last year in Thailand, a bunch of street photography stuff, some events and it's it's been really nice to see those photos again so um, I'll get through scanning all of them eventually but today we're gonna pick one to print and I think I'm just gonna kind of go with what feels nice I feel like part of this whole exercise is that I want to make images for myself again you know a lot of this is for clients or it's for social media um, so I kind of want to focus on things that I like and things that I'm interested in and things that excite me and I know there's a bit of a weird elephant in the room I'm recording stuff for YouTube but you know, it's, it's about me, so we'll, we'll figure it out. So anyway, out of all these rolls, I selected one that I think might be fun to print. Um, just a quick, easy, relaxed one to get back into the, the printing side of darkroom photography. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get to printing. So I've kind of got my frame set up the way I want it to be. I've dialed in my corners and kind of made the crop. I realize I'm a little bit more partial towards images that are a bit more rectangular. I don't know if I've been shooting 4x5s and stuff a little bit too much, but I feel like the 35 image looks like really long this way now. But I'm just going to use the the size of the 8x10 paper that we're using today as kind of the frame. So I've cropped it to kind of that aspect ratio. And the image that we're printing today is from a street shoot that I did with a friend of mine when I was in KL. And it's just this scene of a guy looking at a bunch of shoes at this weekend market. And I don't know, I kind of like that. You don't really see the person and it's kind of telling that story where he's 
here looking at shoes. There's a bunch of shoes. I don't know. It's something just kind of spoke to me, so I, I chose this one is what we're going to do today. So let's run a couple of test strips and we'll see where we're at in terms of our exposure. Alright, frame is set up. Let's just get our focus right. Uh, the shot was uh, done with HP5, so it is pretty easy to find our green. Alright, my timer is set for 3 second increments. Let's do some test prints. Alright, let's develop that. Okay, so we made a couple test prints. Uh, three seconds wasn't really cutting it, so we did five second increments. Uh, and I think that might be a little bit better because I stopped down the lens a little bit more um, to about f8. So we need a little bit more light. Um, but I think somewhere about here, this is five, 10, 15 seconds-ish. Looks pretty nice. It might be a bit hard to see on camera, but over here we got some decent um, detail in his pants and that kind of balances what's happening behind. Um, yeah, I think we'll try a full one at about 15 seconds and we'll see, we'll see how we go. Here's our first full test in the wash and I think it looks pretty good uh, kind of as it is. So the pants and the, the outfit kind of came out really nice. You can kind of see this detail down here which is good. Uh, it might be a tad dark over here so I might reduce this area and I think I need to burn in what's happening on this side that's a little bit over exposed on that end so maybe you know like minus one stop on this side plus one on here and we should be pretty good I'd say so let's let's do that so I'm going to dodge this kind of area for maybe about five seconds just to kind of preserve some of those those shadows in there and then on this side we're gonna burn it for another about five seconds just to kind of bring in that overexposed portion that's kind of over here all right so I'm gonna use my card for a little dodging and burning and so first we have to dodge that upper part where kind of the shoes were Then I'm going to come in, cover the entire lens, and then we're just going to do this manually. So larger on, one, two, three, four, five. All right, let's develop. See it starting to come up. All right, and I think we have our print. Um, I'm not going to get too fancy with it. Just a bit of a refresher, getting back into darkroom printing a little bit at a time. We did some burning over here just to bring out that kind of overexposed highlight bit on that end. And then we dodged this kind of area just to bring up the shadows a little bit. But yeah, overall I think it looks pretty good. Um, you know, still bits and pieces to improve, but you know, that'll happen over time. And as I get printing more and more and yeah, it's been a nice way to kind of get back into it. All right, so there we go. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, it's just, I don't know, something kind of called out to me when I was looking through all the negatives and seeing something that I kind of wanted to print. And, and yeah, I don't know, it's just a nice little self-contained like story of a guy looking for shoes. And kind of in light of today's theme of you know making images for myself like I won't be putting this up for sale it's just gonna be for me I'll put it on the wall 
Uh, but in the future, I do plan to sell some of these stuff, so that's kind of a way to support the, the channel, the process. Um, I do have other prints for sale for you guys to go and check out. If you're in Penang, Malaysia, stop by for a chat. Um, I do workshops as well. Yeah, I think that just kind of about wraps everything up. Thank you for joining me for the journey. And I've got a couple of fun ones planned in the next year. So, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. And I'll get to cleaning all of this stuff up. See ya.